Hello, welcome to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird, and wow, it's been an exciting morning. The US National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy have now released the spectacular first images from the groundbreaking Vera C. Rubin Observatory. You see one of those images behind me. This telescope is located on Cerro Pachon, an 8,800 foot mountain in the Chilean Andes. It's been 20 years in the making. And this morning, June 23rd, 2025, the astronomers referred to it as the greatest astronomical discovery machine ever built. And I thought I'd show you this short video first. It's one of the most beautiful images, uh, one of the most beautiful regions of the sky. In the midst of the starry band of the summer Milky Way, as captured by the Vera Rubin Observatory. So these are called the Trifid and Lagoon Nebulas. They're star forming regions in the Milky Way. The Vera Rubin Observatory captured and combined more than 600 individual images to create this image that you see behind me. And that capability is just one reason that the Vera Rubin Observatory is the first of its kind. Next, watch how fast its telescope can slew from one part of the sky to another. It's 10 to 100 times faster than comparable telescopes. So the telescope now is familiar to the Tony telescope. It uh, has a lot of infrastructure running throughout its entire structure, bringing fiber. Okay, that's enough of that, right? So that might not look fast to you, but it's fast for a telescope weighing some 350 metric tons. This telescope will be able to cover the entire sky uh, every few nights. Let's take another look at the telescope. Technical difficulties, hang in there. Well, there we go. <laughs> okay, the uniqueness of this observatory is in the design of the telescope's mirror. It's a three mirror design. And plus the size and sensitivity of its camera. The camera is already in the Guinness Book of World Records. And finally, the computer infrastructure that underlies it all, and that'll be able to relay the data to astronomers around the world. So all of those features together are why astronomers predict this observatory will be able to gather more data than all other ground and space-based telescopes combined. And so this telescope is going to survey the entire southern sky every few nights over 10 years, and it'll be able to catch faint objects doing whatever it is that they're doing out there in the depths of the universe. Here's another newly released video.
that beautiful? So the mission of this telescope and camera is to create a time-lapse record, uh, a movie. Yes, Dorothy, it is so interesting and amazing. Uh, it's going to create a movie, the biggest astronomy movie of all time. And by the way, who was Vera Rubin? Um, I actually had the privilege of meeting her and knowing her. She was the first, uh, she was an American astronomer who provided the first convincing evidence for the existence of dark matter. So you might know about Kepler's second law of planetary motion. It was first published in the year 1609, and it requires that planets closest to the sun move fastest in orbit. And so planets farther from the sun must move slower. And the same should be true of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Stars on the outskirts of our galaxy should move slower. Vera Rubin wasn't the first to suggest the existence of dark matter. But her meticulous studies of over 75 spiral galaxies showed that stars on the outer edges of galaxies were moving much faster than expected. And she and her colleagues came to the only conclusion they could, which was that a significant amount of mysterious, unseen, dark matter must be present beyond the galaxy's visible boundaries. So there's still some construction going on at Cerro Pachon in Chile, and the telescope isn't fully operational yet but it's expected to go into full operation uh, later this year, by the end of this year. For today, <laughs> that's our show. Uh, I'm Deborah Bird. I'll be back tomorrow speaking with Astro Bob King, our favorite amateur astronomer, and one of the world's very best uh, astronomy educators about, guess what, a nova or new star that's in the sky right now. One Earth. One sky, Earth sky.